Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Brian. If you happen to be new but returning subscribers, welcome back you magnificent beasts. That's what you get for subscribing by the way. Free compliments at the start of these videos. Now today I'm breaking down the Reaper for PvP in Final Fantasy XIV. If you guys haven't uh, checked out any of my previous controller guides, note that I've got playlists all set up for you both for PvE and PvP here on the channel. So hopefully you can find exactly what you need when playing Final Fantasy XIV on a controller. Now, this is going to have a focus of controller, but overall, this should hopefully help serve as a de facto guide for the Reaper, getting you started playing this job in PvP. And you should absolutely check out the PvP system. I'm thoroughly enjoying it, and I'm very much having a blast making these guides and breaking down the jobs for you. The structure of this video is going to be as follows. We're going to dive through all the skills, kind of talk about them, what they specifically do, so that way you're armed with the information of what these tooltips actually do. Then we're going to talk about my layout and we're talking about situations here with the Reaper and how you can kind of start to weave and connect different skills together and hopefully maximize your damage and hopefully get you guys the most success. If you guys need any additional tips and tricks when it comes to PvP in Final Fantasy XIV, sound off below. I'm also taking all recommendations in terms of how I release these guides. So note that I'm going to be working on each and every job again for both PvE and PvP uh, for Final Fantasy XIV. So without further ado, thanks for being here. Let's rock and roll. And be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share all that great YouTube stuff, which helps these videos out dramatically. All right, let's dive into our skills. If you guys don't know anything about PvP, at its core, you want to teleport first into the uh, the Wolves' Den, which you can find out here in Limbs of Lamenza. It kicks off level 30 uh, from a quest as you join a grand company. Uh, you have to be level 30. It is all related to the job system itself. Then from here, you'll have your PvP profile in which that you can get all your actions. You teleport out here, you're going to have a whole different UI setup. And so I would actually point you into your HUD layout, maybe make a separate copy of your existing HUD, and then you can element whatever you need that's going to be specific for PvP. I would recommend checking out Duty if you're looking for Duty specific UI like Crystalline Conflict and more. And that's going to be essentially where you kind of go get set up from there. All right, back into our PvP profile for our different skills the reaper uh, melee in this case you're going to be up close and personal you're going to have your combo infernal slice which actually is these three abilities so just one ability set will combo as you use them you'll get slice with a potency of 3000 and a potency conversion in pvp is 3000 actually represents 3000 hit points on the target there is no mitigation in armor so it is just a straight 3000 damage ability unless they're mitigating it somehow via their own skills or abilities so just note that that is essentially where your baseline is and it will go up and down depending on how you combo this then you've got waxing slice a potency of 4000 that auto combos from here and then finally infernal slice delivers an attack potency of 5000 so you can see here pretty much a 12000 potency combo at its core then you have Soul Slice. This is a charged ability. You get two charges with a charge time of 20 seconds. Delivers an attack with a potency of 8,000. And it grants a stack of Soul Sacrifice up to a maximum of 8. Uh, this does not share a recast timer with any other actions. Then you have Plentiful Harvest. This has got a recast time of 60 seconds. This is your massive long cooldown in a PvP match. But note that it delivers an attack with a potency of 4,000 to all enemies in a straight line before you. The potency increases up to 20,000 based on your accumulated stacks of Immortal Sacrifice gained by executing Soul Slice. So pay attention here. So KOing enemies are earning assists, essentially how that kind of fills up. Gradually, it's going to fill your limit break gauge. This is going to help you bring go into limit break gauge easier, and that's going to last for 15 seconds. The effect can only be activated while in combat, consuming all stacks of mortal sacrifice upon execution, and can only be executed while under the effect of Enshroud. This weapon skill does not share any recast timer with any other actions. Then you have Grim Swath. Summon your avatar to deliver an attack before uh, before you with a cone of 4,000 tall enemies in that cone. Grants two sacks of Soul Reaver. It's going to last 10 seconds, and it's going to apply a heavy effect to them for three seconds. So this is where it takes Infernal Slice combo, and it changes it to Gibbet upon execution. Then you've got Death Warrant. Pay attention to this ability. 
affects a target with death warrant causing you to compile damage you deal to the target when the effect expires target takes 50 percent of your compiled damage that's going to be a seven second duration it also will grant soul sal which will last for 10 seconds so it's a combo ability it auto upgrades but note that it's going to fill up and apply even more damage to the target you have hell's ingress quickly dash 15 yams forward leaves the hell gate behind you and grants threshold to self and that's gonna last 10 seconds it's gonna increase your movement speed for five seconds as well and then you have arcane crest this is going to uh, grant crest of borrowed time to self creating a barrier that nullifies damage equivalent of a heal of 8,000 potency and it's gonna last 10 seconds it's also going to increase your damage dealt by 10 10 percent for 10 seconds and grants the crest of time returned to self and nearby party members with a radius of 15 yams when the barrier is completely absorbed so basically that's going to gradually restore your hp with that effect being applied with a cure potency of 4,000 for six seconds so if it gets blasted down you're still going to heal and also heal up your other party members your limit break is offers your flesh as a vessel towards your avatar granting five stacks of enshroud it's gonna last for 15 seconds the afflicts nearby enemies with hysteria and can only be executed while the limit break gauge is full the action is going to change to commando uh, while under the effect of enshroud and grim swath uh, changes to lemore slice while under the effect as well as inferno slice combo changes to void reaping while under the effect of enshroud no, let's go into it now those are the abilities that you set everything from here on out is just going to be abilities that are auto upgrades so note that that is how you're going to have these all applied to your uh, character so then you have gibbet delivers an attack with a potency of 8,000, and it's going to grant gallows oiled it's going to last for 10 seconds can only be executed on the effect of soul reaver the infernal slice combo will change the gallows one of the effect of gallows oiled and soul reaver and this can't be signed to the hot bar then you have gallows delivers an attack with a potency of 8,000, can only be executed while under the effect of soul reaver and gallows oiled and this might sound like there's a lot of complexity here but it will feel really natural when you actually get into into it then you have void reaping delivers an attack with a potency of 8,000, grants ripe for reaping which is going to last 10 seconds and can only be executed under the effect of enshroud this weapon skill does not share recast timers with other actions infernal slice combo is going to change to cross reaping while under the effect of ripe for weeping or reaping <laughs> cross reaping delivers an attack with a potency of 8,000, can only be executed while under the effect of enshroud and ripe for reaping lemore delivers a uh, attack with a potency of 4,000 to all enemies before you it's going to have a binding effect on them that's going to last for three seconds harvest moon this is the upgrade that you get from i believe it's uh yeah death warrant yes harvest moon so that deals unexpected damage with a potency of 4,000 to targets and all enemies nearby potency actually increases up to 8,000 if the target's hp uh decreases and reach a maximum value when target is 50 percent or less hp the other effect hits has is absorbs 100 percent of the damage dealt as hp and can only be under effect of soul shroud again your death warrant here then you have regress that's going to return you right back to your uh, hell's gate and finally commando deals unexpected damage with a potency of 16,000 to all targets and enemies nearby it requires at least one stack of enshroud consumes all stacks of enshroud upon execution and does have a cast time so be sure to pay attention to that aspect our shared abilities standard issue elixir is going to heal you all the way up recuperate it's going to be a nice 25 uh, or 1500 potency heal it's going to consume one fourth of your mp bar purify it's going to get you out of bad and then you know anything that's stun any stun sleep violence all that be sure to keep purify on your bar guards going to protect you if you're being focused finally sprint is going to be there for you to catch uh, and move fast it doesn't have a timer it will uh de-sprint as soon as you use another ability now how i set up my controller just as a an fyi i've got my button configuration and i actually have sprint bound to a macro that is set to macro 99 or down click on the right stick so that's how you would set that and then under your user macros you can see here listed on screen that i have pvp action sprint that's how you would assign a sprint action do not worry about how it all stacks together this works perfectly fine in fact actually on this video i can delete finrear because i have flying unlocked in all my zones yay go me all right so uh that is just something for you just to know and so now let's go ahead and talk about my layout and how it all comes together 
so traditionally for my double cross hop bar and cross hop bar setup i like to put abilities that i need to use on the abxy and be able to still continue to move that essentially makes it very comfortable for me to run around and do things now sometimes i have to make an exception like you see here where i put that you know pretty much that death warrant on uh, a d-pad namely because it has traditionally a little bit longer of a cooldown I'm going to let you guys make the best call for you. I tend to prioritize recuperate there as well, but you could easily perhaps switch out uh, Grim Swythe for that. But essentially being that this is a recast of 20 and this is a recast of 15, that is the decision I ultimately made. So you can see here on my A on the right hand side, I've got Infernal Slice combo, Grim Swythe, recuperate, Soul Slice. Then I got Death Warrant, uh, my Limit Break, Telambre, Limorum, and then my Standard Issue Elixir all here on the d-pad not necessarily a, a bad call but ultimately you can kind of make your choice now i use the expanded cross hop bar so if i actually jump into that you'll see here i actually have the limit break set here as well i've got plentiful harvest that 60 second cooldown still insta cast and i want to make sure that i'm making uh, full use of this i got hell's ingress for my gap closer and then i've got arcane crest namely because if i'm gap closing chances are i'm going to be in the thick of things and i want to be able to do that right there as well so then here on the expanded cross hop bar, I got purified guard, standard issue elixir, and again, plentiful harvest. And on my UI, I, I label these things so that I'm paying attention to that they're available and ready to use. On the right hand side, hello, good match. Do have limit break. And this is something you want to be able to put on your uh, bar that will tell you what percentage that you are in terms of your limit break, which is very handy to communicate to your team so that they way know you're ready to go. The UI does communicate uh, who has limit breaks up. So be paying attention there. Then standard issue elixir and purifying just in case I panic and I need it and I can't figure out and remember where it's at. Now, overall, if I start to do my combo, you can see here the death's embrace uh, is off the global cooldown. So I can continue to build up various different things and use my off the global cooldowns to try and rack up as much damage as absolute possible. As I build up those various different stacks, I want to then obviously utilize my plentiful harvest and bring in as much damage as possible for my target so overall you're going to find yourself moving around pretty frequently the big change comes in when you're obviously using your limit break now what i like to do hell's ingress it obviously is going to take whatever uh, where you are and return you exactly there but arcane crest don't forget about it as it increases your overall damage here you can see that my abilities have now been altered and start to change now you're going to want to see that countdown so you don't miss out on pulling off a commando and bringing in a massive amount of damage to you and your targets as well because Komondo obviously is an AoE effect and it can be quite devastating to a group and actually turn the tides in battle. I highly recommend and I do enjoy how much Reaper feels like they can change the tides of battle also with a well-placed shield and putting out plenty of damage. Don't forget to heal. Don't forget to guard if you're being focused. And don't forget to use your elixir if you have a moment of downtime and you need to recover your HP. But more importantly, your MP actually ends up being kind of a real big factor that I find that I use my elixir for the most. So that's my layout. That's essentially how I play the Reaper in PvP, and I'm having a blast with it. I'm looking forward to delivering more of these guides to you here in the future. Hopefully you got something good from this video. If you have any questions, sound off below. Like, favorite, subscribe, and share if you feel like I earn it. And without further ado, I bid you adieu. Have a great one, and I hope to see you in my next video. But until then, take care. Yeah. It's time to chill out on the couch and read some comments. That's right. You know me when it comes to destiny. I'm off with a clam, and I'm glad you're feeling better. Oh, yeah.